Hello PIC family. Excitement still fills my heart after our in-person meeting last week. But let me use this platform to greet you a very merry, blessed Christmas from my family to yours. A new update from the pandemic gives chill and anxiety to all of us. But the good news is, today as ever, we have that assurance that Jesus, Emmanuel, is with us. A time for our reflection. This night, this night is a night to remember, a night when home broke in on us, a night when we were not forgotten or alone or abandoned. This night, this night is the night when here and there became one, when past and future combined in a breathless present. This is a night when we are home, in ourselves, in this family, in the God who loved us enough to walk beside us. We gather in the night to proclaim the light, we shrug of despair and embrace hope. We set aside conflict and choose peace. We push away despair by claiming joy. We overcome hate by rising into love. Because this night we know, even in the shadows of our doubts, we know that we are loved. That's what it means to be home. We light these candles, hoping to become the light, hoping to radiate light by how we live. We light these candles to create a space called home in this place. In our place, in inner places, we light these candles to declare that unto us a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. Welcome the home by angels, singing and shepherds kneeling. Welcome the home by those like us who have worshipped for thousands of years. Welcome the home again tonight, right here right now in us. It's time to be home. We now come to the lighting of the Christmas candle. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful holiday. Uh, it's Christmas season, Panginoon, and uh, we are so glad that uh, we have uh, received so many blessings in our life. But the most important thing, Panginoon, is uh, your uh, coming here and uh, being incarnated, being the divine, uh, and uh, your purpose of uh, saving us from our sinful nature is truly something that we can uh, cherish. And we pray that you will lead us as we 
celebrate Christmas season uh, through this uh, uh, year and uh, the year to come, the year 2022. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Call to worship from the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a son is born, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Glory to God, let us worship Him. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to focus on you today, remembering that the gift of Christ, Emmanuel, is our most treasured gift for the whole year through. Fill us with your joy and the peace of your spirit. Direct our hearts and minds towards you. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebrations and in seasons of brokenness, you are still with us. You never leave us. Thank you for your daily presence in our lives, that we can be assured your heart is toward us, your eyes are over us, 
and your ears are open to our prayers. Thank you for your surrounding us with favor as with a shield. We are shaped in your care. We choose to press in close you today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's offer our songs of praise and greet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a happy, happy birthday. Good afternoon po, Pasadena Yemri Church, and welcome to our last Sunday of uh, the year 2021 and also the best time to celebrate uh, the end of the year and also the best time to celebrate the coming new year, 2022. Kamusta po kayo? At uh, naway na sa mabuti po kayong kalagayan this afternoon. Uh, I saw uh, last uh, Sunday's fellowship and uh, truly I am so blessed and happy to see the church coming together again. Having really some good fellowship with other Christian brothers and sisters in the Lord. So for this afternoon, I'll be delivering the Christmas message for everyone. Our text is found in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 20. 
Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. And I'll uh, begin reading the following verses. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered, at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. You know, the Christmas story never grows old. And it is fresh every year. Hindi po naluluma ang um, kwento ng kapaskuhan at ito ay laging uh, bago. It is not a holiday. It is a holy day. And without Christ, there would be no Christmas because Jesus Christ is the center of our celebration. And so Christmas is the birthday of Jesus. Now people were saying, they argue that we are not really sure when uh, the real date, the real uh, exact moment when Christ was uh, delivered into this world. But it doesn't matter because what is important is we celebrate He's coming at least once a year. And December 25 is the best time to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. So it's easy to be so busy. We crowd Christ out of our Christmas. Sometimes we remove Jesus in the center of this Christmas season when he is the very center. He is the source of everything where we were celebrating for. And so we, we will begin with Jesus Christ. We will begin with the Son. 
Okay. So, who is this son of God that Mary and Joseph has to go to pay their taxes? So, just like any normal people during their time, they are under the rule of the Roman Empire. And one of the rules is for them to pay their taxes. But also, Jesus Christ is not just any ordinary person. He is the Son of God. He is the best that God can offer. And he gave his best. If we read John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So he is the perfect gift that we can receive because when we receive him, all the material things will be useless. No? And what is left is the eternal life that is being offered to us. And not just, he is not just the son of God, he is also the son of man. So let's see the character of the Son of Man in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 11. Let's read from Philippians. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a serv servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted, uh, highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And also in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 uh, verse 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So I would like you to note these five of his characteristics in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. And this is very, very important. And this is his character. Next is the shepherds. Uh, this is uh, from verses 8 to 10, the shepherds. I know that it's not showing in your end right now, but uh, that, that is about them. So in verses 8 to 10, you see how they were busy keeping their sheep. They were working at the time. And then they wonder the glory of God coming down to them and since they were just humble shepherds, they were feel fearful. And in verse 10, they were advised not to fear. And what did the angel say? Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which is to be, shall be to all people. So there's a proclamation of great joy and great tidings uh, and the shepherds were the first people who were informed about this coming event. Third is about the Savior. Let me just check if it's uh, showing on my PowerPoint. Yes. There, and uh, it's in verse 11. The Savior, uh, one of the signs 
that Jesus Christ is the Savior, is the place where he was born. This is the city of David. This is the city of Bethlehem. And this is where King David was born and raised. And so he is the promised Savior, the promised Messiah of the Old Testament, who is now born. And one of the prophets, prophets has told of and to whose coming they had looked forward. During the time of Jesus Christ, there was also a king named Herod. And Bethlehem will also be a place of agony for those mothers who lost their, who lost their child during that time. And it was not written in any history books because Bethlehem is just a small town uh, considering that it was uh, not really meant to be noticed by historians about what had happened during that time. And so we look also about the sign in verse 12, the sign that Jesus is born in a stable among the animals is a sign that Jesus was born in a humble place like, um, like the manger among the cows and donkeys. And he lived a humble life. He had no permanent home. He, he died a humble death upon a cross and was buried in a humble way in a borrowed tomb. So most of his life, he lived in humility from the root word humus or ground. Jesus stayed grounded and he knows that no matter what situation he is in, he's, got, he's part of being divine, being part of the Godhead will not be diminished. Next is the song in verses 13 to 14. We see, uh, we see there the praising of the people to God, the, the praising of the uh, shepherds and the peace that was told to, that this will be the peace on earth to all men. And it was promised in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that he will bring peace. The world cannot have peace until they have Christ. Now, we are living in a time of pandemic. But since we have Christ in our lives, in our hearts, we have this personal relationship with him. And we, we would like to grow deep into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have that inner peace that no matter what happened to us, we are comforted that God will, will uh, bring us with him into paradise. If we die, we, we, that's no problem for us because we are, we are comforted that we have eternal life with him. And so from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, we can read that he is the prince of peace in the last uh, characteristic, five characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ. Next is the seeking. The seeking of the shepherds who want to see Christ. They have this desire to see this uh, baby. And so they come to see Joseph and Mary and Jesus. And we see Christ through faith, prayer, and the Bible. That's how we would like to see Christ nowadays. If the shepherds were able to see him in a manger, nowadays as Christians, we see Christ through intercession of prayer, through faith that is not tangible that is not seen but it's something that we can feel and by the reading of his word and also by the preaching of uh, his word and we are instructed to go out 
and tell others about Christ because uh, that's when they will have faith when they hear about Christ by sharing them, sharing the word to others. So if we can spread the word, verses 18 to 20, about the wonders and miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ and how Mary worshiped the Lord, which is in verse 19, and how the shepherds were, were a witness and they were, they were praising God and they tell others about what they saw and uh, about what they heard from the heavens with the angels telling them that it was the greatest event that had happened in our lifetime. Then we're being part of the, uh, the we're kind of a missionary in the same in the same way where we spread the word about the Lord. And that's very important because Christ has come to us, his birth, his life, death, and resurrection, and ascension bring joy to us all. That's the center of the Christmas message, not just his birth, but his whole life. And if we want joy, in our lives, we must have Christ because he came to give joy and peace to all people. If we have Christ, then we have joy. Without Christ, we cannot have joy, peace, or satisfaction. So my, my question to you right now, do you have Christ? Do you have a personal relationship with him? And if you do, then the Christmas message today will surely have a deeper meaning, a deeper impact of how you will use them in your life by, by spreading the joy of uh, the good news of Christ's birth. Today, Paul, I thank you for joining us in our online worship and Merry Christmas to each and every one of us.
our sending forth from the book of John chapter 3:16 For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him but have everlasting life Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day where we celebrate Christmas uh, season with the uh, culmination of your birthday. Though there are many uh, questions about the exact date of your uh, coming here, but we know that it's not important as long as we celebrate it and uh, just like how we celebrate our own birthdays. We know how important it is for each and every one of us to celebrate your coming here. The incarnation, which is very important, where you come here to save us from our sins and to cleanse us from our blemishes. And as we conclude our worship service, may your blessing be upon each and every one of us this afternoon. Now to him is able to keep you from falling, to present you without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>